Hi, this is The Advisor with Stacey Chalemi. Today, I'm very excited to introduce someone very special to our show. But before we begin, I just want to give a quick shout out to DMA World Cons Marketing Consultant. They're an agency that help people um, you know, build their small businesses into big businesses. They're tired of seeing small businesses get scammed by those large marketing companies. And their main goal is to help startups and to help small businesses grow at a reasonable cost so they don't get scammed and pay tens of thousands of dollars for marketing that they could do and help you without all those large expenses. So check out dmaworld.com where they give really good marketing consulting at a very reasonable cost. So today I have uh, Dr. Terry. He is a former uh, golf golfer. He is an athlete and he also is a sports, a former sports chiropractor. And he is here today to tell us a little about himself and his story and some amazing things that he's done with his experience as being a professional golfer and also as a sports chiropractor. Um, he's done, he has an amazing story. So I'm very excited. I'm not going to ramble on. Dr. Terry, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Stacy, thanks. And uh, first of all, uh, love your show and uh, thanks for having us on. Um, so I'll give you a quick uh, just a quick background. Uh, as you said, pretty much a sports junkie as I grew up. Uh, Stacy, always interested in how the body moved, how I could get better. You know, I think in sports, it's very interesting. You can, you go out and you enjoy it. And you, and, you know, kids out there, you should always enjoy it. That's, that's, I think that's extremely important that you're always playing. But there comes a point when it gets competitive and you need to really understand how your body's moving and, you know, different thing, different positions about the sport. So, I was hockey uh, as a Canadian. I was hockey first. Um, learned a lot that way. And then uh, I switched into golf, basketball. Uh, all three are still a passion of mine to this day. Um, still doing a lot of coaching to this day. But but in my personal life, uh, I, I really golf won out, I would say. And uh, the details of golf as golfers, if you have golfers in the audience, would not be surprised about Um Golf won out and it really took a, a deep study to as he got better and better as an amateur. Uh, and then you competed in in like local levels and getting into state levels. Bigger levels, you, you just have to get more acute with what you're doing and you have to continue to learn to get better. It was a natural drop over when I chose uh, my vocation in my life to choose. I was really interested in the body and how it ran. So how it worked how it performed at its best, how it stayed healthy. So I chose chiropractic as a profession and I was really interested in sports chiropractic. So when I got into practice, about half my practice was sports, half was uh, family practice. So I saw a little bit of everything, Stacey. Um, golf never got out of my system. I will tell you that I was, I had a pretty successful college career and uh, there came a point in my life actually where my father passed away a little unexpectedly and and it really uh, got me thinking that if, you know, life's short, if I'm going to try some big things, let's try it now. And took some time off of practice and and pursued uh, professional golf. Uh, just to let your audience know, I did not make the PGA Tour, if you don't recognize the face or the voice or et cetera. But, um, which was tough at the time for me, to be honest with you, I felt, I don't know if about a failure, but what happened in that process, Stacey, is that I ran across a lot of People got to know that I was a sports chiropractor, the, the golfers on tour, um, and they came to me with a lot of questions. Uh, I would say a great degree of them, a surprising degree of them had to do with what I knew was equated to repetitive gripping. Mm -hmm. And the one thing I can say right off the bat that that the audience, I just hope you everybody takes away is that gripping is not just a finger and thumb thing. The grip structures and joints are your fingers, your thumbs, your hands, your wrists, your carpal tunnel, your forearms, your elbows. They are all grip structures. And I will say I kind of knew it at the time when I started seeing these injuries. But boy, in golf, when you're dealing with uh, people that are practicing all day, uh, fitness, they're in the fitness room all day. Um, they're playing golf tournaments. They're always repetitive gripping. So we would see all injuries to these joints. And that what, <clears throat> that's what led me to uh, creating a solution to that. And that's probably the best way to get into our story. Um, it was, it was almost, uh, it was almost fortunate that I didn't make the, you know, that I wasn't good enough to play professional golf because I got to instead help 
you know, we're over a million people for sure that we've helped with our product well over a million people. And um, it's something I love to talk about. I love to educate people about the hand and grip muscles are way more important than we've ever been led to believe. Um, and, and I'd love to talk to you, to you guys more about that. Yeah, I'd love to learn more. So what, in, what inspired you the most to want to actually focus on this product? And can you tell us a little about the product? Yeah, I'll tell you a lot about the product. So the product's called Handmaster Plus. Um, I think the great thing about it from my background is we really care how the body moves naturally. We look a lot as a chiropractor, or, and I think most health professions, you, you really want to study how is the body built and how does, I'll say in this particular instance, because we're talking about the grip muscles, how do the grip muscles actually work? Um, right. I was always interested in it because we were, I was always told as a kid, take something and squeeze it. You take something, you take a racquetball or a spring loader or a coiled uh, tool and you squeeze it. And as I got to learn more about, uh, about the body and we studied the fingers and the thumbs and I will say the hand, yes, but the carpal tunnel and the, and the elbow is where I really realized we have no idea what we're doing in grip and it's, it's causing problems. So, um, so with Handmaster Plus, we just studied, I used to have uh, in practice, before I went off to play, to try to take this run at professional golf, I used to do about, I would say five or six exercises. Patients would be confused. They wouldn't have time to do it. It was very hard to get them to actually, uh, get the, get the exercises done. And there's 27 muscles of grip. And I would say at least 27 muscles, nine muscles, close the hand, nine muscles, open and spread the hand and nine muscles position the wrist in whatever grip activity you're doing. So yeah. I bring that up because instead of uh, showing the athletes six or seven different exercises that are really confusing and really aren't connected very well, yeah. when I was challenged to, to uh, especially in professional golf, these guys don't have a lot of time that I was working with, and they are very dependent. I saw a lot of debilitating injuries, and I realized I have to do something to simplify this exercise even though i know how to train these 27 muscles yeah. and i would i would stop at all the tour stops and i couldn't find anything i had a three o'clock in the morning aha moment that if i just took a round ball which is the way the hand should close uh three-dimensionally and if i gutted it out and put an elastic uh resistance throughout it i could get that person to just close open and spread and they would train the 18 hand muscles and then we could do some other act. We do another exercise so that we can get them to train the forearm muscles. Then it's all continuous. It's all full range of motion. It agrees with the structure of the body and it agrees with how grip works. And once we started using the prototype, which is now Handmaster Plus, we just saw unbelievable things start to happen and injuries go away uh, and performance go up. Um, and that's, that's the basis of Handmaster Plus, what it is today. Wow. That's amazing. You know, I, I think, um, when people, when people use this, can you explain how it actually works? Like when the Handmaster? Uh, yeah, I'll show it to you. I actually have one right here. So even if you're, even if for your audience, and one of the things is we're not just here to promote the product itself. We're here yeah. to kind of show, I'm always here on these shows. Uh, especially these health and fitness shows, which we love to do, is to get the, the person to understand actually why we use this product. So yeah. if anybody anybody can take their hand and, and just make a grip, just close it and make a fist. That's your nine muscles that close the hand. Okay, they're going through their full range of motion. Now they can open and spread their hand. And those are the nine muscles that open and spread their hand. The next, they can, while their hand is open, they can take their hand and put it through a full figure eight, a full figure eight. If you do only that, close for one, open for one, full figure eight, you are doing the, you're training all those muscles. Now, this is what Handmaster Plus looks like. I, I always talk about it a lot because it's a toyish looking little deal. A lot of people dismiss it. But when I put this now, I'll put it on my thumb and I'll put it on all my fingers. And again, now that your audience knows that it's 27 muscles that are involved in grip, they'll never do hand exercise wrong again. But now we devised Handmaster Plus based on that story that I told you, uh, yeah. Stacey. And now all I'm doing is I'm going to add a ball for resistance of the closing. 
And now when I open and spread, you can see that I take their, I take all the fingers and thumbs through their full natural three-dimensional range of motion, but now I have resistance. Right. And so I can close against the ball, open and spread against the cord. And now with the hand open, I do a figure eight, and that's going to train the nine muscles to position the wrist. So I close, open and spread, figure eight, close, open, spread, figure eight. That's our main exercise. And, and when people feel this, they would you just they are shocked by what it feels like to have those 27 muscles resisted at one time. And it's hard to begin with, but it becomes easy. Three, four weeks, they're doing it quite easily. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing because so many people, even, you know, you use a mouse every day and you're closing your hands and you're like, your, your hand is clasped around that for hours and you don't even realize it. And so many people develop, you know, inflammation and they develop pain in their hands just from using a mouth on, on, a, on a consistent basis. And so what type of relief do people get from doing that exercise? Is, the, is it the increase of the circulation of the blood that actually helps, you know, heal? Any type of pain or discomfort you have in your hands? Yeah, boy, excellent question. Because um, the the thing that, you know, we talk about how this developed in golf and uh, we took it from golf, you know, once I, you know, failed as a, as a professional golfer, um, you, you started to realize these mechanics are everywhere. Like you say, they're in the office, somebody on their mouse, somebody on a keyboard. You start to look at the position of the hand and wrist and everything. And we start, me, myself, with my experience, started to say this, this problem is everywhere. We went yeah. into music and into gaming, for example, or into the workplace like you're talking about. So how does it heal? Well, if you can see, let's, I'm going to, I'll, I'll take a second and kind of, kind of compare it historically. If I take something and I, I, I grab it, I'm halfway through the flexion motion already and I squeeze it. Well, that's a very small range of motion. So if I told you, Stacy, if I told you to take a brick and just hold it at 90 degrees all day, or just a small range of motion to yeah. train the bicep, you would call me crazy. You'd say, Terry, what are you doing? You, you don't do that. You put it through its full range of motion, you know, mm -hmm. to make, to make any muscle strong and long and balanced, it has to go through its full range of motion. What does that do? It trains it through through all the range of motion. It doesn't shorten the tissue. But the yeah. second thing that it does, as you mentioned, which very few people ask me about, um, is that it stimulates. Because now my brain is saying, wow, Terry is now taking those hands through the full natural range of motion. I better, you know, the, the, the innate intelligence of the body says, I'm going to now bring blood flow to those tissues. And blood flow brings all the oxygen and nutrients to keep those tissues healthy because you're now using them, right? That's part of your right. environment. And it's also very importantly, stimulating better uh, venous drainage away from those tissues and also lymphatic drainage, which most people are starting to hear a lot about because that's yeah. kind of your sewage system. It's your, it's, uh, it has a lot to do with keeping you healthy. Yes, but it's also your sewage system. And now we're getting blood flow and lymph drainage all the way to the upper extremity. Um, right. And now we're stimulating not only, we want the muscles to be trained in balance. I think most people understand that by now. And if I take something, I only squeeze it. I'm shortening the thumb, the fingers. I'm collapsing the carpal tunnel. I'm shortening the forearm and I'm shortening the elbow. So mechanically, we could talk endlessly about the problems of repetitive grip in exercising, in fitness, in activity, in music, in the workplace, we could go on and on and on about it. But when we provide the solution to strengthen those 27 muscles through their full range of motion, we get muscle length, muscle strength, muscle balance. And then what you talked about, how we heal, how the body heals innately is by bringing blood flow, which supplies all those you know oxygen and nutrients to the tissues and the joints yeah. that's how we keep joints healthy too you know think arthritis yeah. and it also because we're taking it through a full range of motion the, the joints and structures it stimulates maximum venous drainage you know carrying all the byproducts of muscle contractions and etc and any any toxin that might be uh in your system that's taking that away so it's venous drainage and lymph drainage as well wow yeah that's amazing that's amazing yeah. 
Now, now, how many times a day do you have to use this? Is it, it do you do you have like a set? You should you do it in the morning, or is there a certain amount of time you should be doing it for for it to be most effective? Yeah, it's a good question, Stacy. We would usually say, like in with these structures, and again, there are a lot of there's they're a little bit smaller muscles and longer tendons, and we can get into the anatomy of this a little bit, but it's it, it's not something that you demand like really high reps every day you just demand consistency you're trying to get your body to adapt into a consistent uh proper health routine for these structures so what we tell people is we want them to do it one to three times a day and that might seem kind of general but even one time a day consistently is going to stimulate the muscle length the muscle strength the balance and all the circulation that we're talking about so ideally, if you could do it, yes, yeah, sometime early in the day, sometime midday, sometime late day, you'd see great results. And, you know, I hope some listeners might say, and I wouldn't blame them, because one of the limits of why we get in, why we don't get into these good or good habits is because they are too time consuming. Right. Um, I'll give the example of the athlete. An athlete has the professional golfer. They have their chipping, their putting, there's bunker play, their you know, driving, their iron play, their fitness. They have a lot to do in the day. So if I say, well, I want you to do this three times a day, well, even three times a day, literally, when you see the exercise, because we've coupled it, and when you try the exercise, if you can go for much more than one minute with that medium, that the we have a soft and a medium and a firm. Most people will use the medium for wellness or performance training. If you can do that figure eight exercise for more than a minute, you are getting extremely strong. So it's not what I'm saying is it does not take long to do this area. The old days, we were asking our athletes, professional and amateur that I worked with, mm -hmm. we were asking them to do a hand exercise for 20 to 30 minutes a day. It's just not realistic. So right. one to three times a day usually take you between 30 seconds to two minutes. And that's, you know, two minutes was our extremely, our, our people that are really well trained in this have been doing it for a long time. So yeah. it doesn't take long. You can do it watching TV. You can do it checking your emails. It, it's something that you can really uh, habit stack pretty easily. Um, but it is something extremely important to your health and fitness. You know, I uh, it's so true because people don't realize, but we use our hands for everything. And when you're in pain, and you're suffering from inflammation, or you, you wake up in the morning and, and it's hard for you to, to move your joints and to grasp onto things because, you know, you yeah. hold a coffee cup, or if you're, you know, if you're typing, or if you're opening the door, or even if you're playing sports, if you, you have, if your hands are in pain, you can't really function. And you don't, you, and then you tend to use your hands less and less. And it's, and the less you use it, the more pain people mostly endure. Isn't that true? Yeah, no, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's interesting because it, it, it opens up a really interesting thing about the hands. And we get asked a lot of these types of questions is we get asked about the symptoms a lot. Um, you know, I'm getting stiffness in my hand. I'm, I'm, and they're focused on the symptom being like, we got to treat that symptom. We got to do something about that symptom. And, and symptoms, we have to really be clear. Symptoms are there to tell you that you have, that there is an imbalance in your life. That's all a symptom is, you know, whether it's an emotional symptom or a, or a physical symptom. So right. we said, so let's talk about arthritis a little bit. People get a lot of stiffness and arthritis. Yeah. And we ask them what their habits have been with the hands. Well, what have you done with these structures? We don't say, what's your pain? Like? Well, certainly we ask about the pain. What are you feeling? What's your symptoms? Because we want to get an idea of what's going on with them. Yeah. Then we say, how, what is your understanding of this hand area? Because there's a lot of uh, arthritis in the, in the hand, um, nice fingers sure. and thumbs, wrists. We see arthritis a lot. What do we do all day? Well, most of those people, a lot of people, let's say the, uh, somebody that's a seamstress or an artist, or uh, let's say a dental hygienist. What are your, what are we doing all day? So we try to get them to look at their lifestyle and learn from these things. Just like I yeah. say, we're not here to, Hey, buy this ball. Well, yeah. we're doing just fine with the ball. We're here to say, learn about your body. The, even learning about this hand area can, can, you can learn about your shoulders, about your neck, about all parts of your body. So 
think that's one of the things that we really want people to focus on is that um, you have to take that bot. You have to look to see what the symptom is telling you. And then yeah. if, if you can realize, wait a minute, this Terry guy said, what am I looking at in my, in my hands for whatever reason? Do I take my hands through their full range of motion on a, on a regular basis in my life? Or am I just repetitive gripping all the time? If you're repetitive gripping, I can tell you nature's not going to treat you any different than anybody else. Eventually, right. you're going to have poor blood flow. You're going to have poor lymph drainage and your body's going to give you that symptom to say, you got to do something different. And if you just, you know, take an anti-inflammatory and say, oh, it feels better. You haven't really got it into the core cause. Right. Of, first of all, understanding your body properly, because it is a great study and you'll start yeah. to appreciate your body more. And, and that's great for your life. And then secondarily, you'll never understand what is the core cause of these problems. And yeah. that's when I would say, okay, now I'm proud of Handmaster Plus because you can take something like this, take it through a full range of motion, understand why you're doing it and watch everything change. And, and that's, that's the, that's the thrill of doing this type of work. And I think that's the, you know, it, you made a very good point because I think one of the biggest problems with our society is that a lot of times people get inflammation or they get pain in their hands and immediately they take an anti-inflammatory. And they don't stop and think, what's the root cause? Why am I getting this? And some people don't realize that, well, no, I have arthritis. Nothing's going to help me or da, 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 da. But if they start exercising and they start moving their core muscles and they start bringing circulation to their hands, they, they're, they are going to have improvement. And they won't, you know, and there is a good possibility they may not need that anti-inflammatory. Is that true? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think uh, I, th you know, I, how would I describe? What I think about this is that you, we're on. We, you know, there's always a, a like a, almost a paradigm. There's almost like a path to where where are we on a certain path? And I can tell you, if you we we talk about, and especially I can use this, but you can take this to any part of your body. But but it's so misunderstood. The hands are the hands and the grip muscles are so misunderstood that we talk about this paradigm. We talk about let's talk about the carpal tunnel because everybody is so confused about that and when you yeah. study the carpal tunnel it's actually not that complicated at all it's a it's a wonderful structure but it's a grip structure it, it the carpal tunnel is built so you can grip there's there's uh, eight finger flexor muscles that go through this tiny tunnel and mm -hmm. there's a thumb flexor muscle so if we don't start to understand this is a grip structure it's right. not that simple but what have we done we've We've put it into a box, carpal tunnel syndrome, scares everybody away. Yeah. You're gonna wear a brace. If the brace doesn't work, you're going to, you know, get us take cortisone shots or something. Then if the cortisone shot doesn't work, you're going to get a surgery. And that is the story, the little box of carpal tunnel that has been created. That yes. is the most ridiculous story that is even possible. What I would say now is, what is your carpal tunnel to somebody? And they would go, you know, I, I don't know. So we would talk now, and I am getting to your answer. We would talk about to a carpal tunnel person, make your carpal tunnel thrive. That's mm -hmm. what we would say. So on a paradigm, we'd say, is your carpal tunnel thriving or are you having carpal tunnel pain? Where are you in this? We don't say carpal tunnel syndrome. We don't, I mean, there's a point if something is so far down the paradigm, hey, yeah. there might be more invasive treatment necessary. I get that, but that's not the way we're doing it. So we can look to say, what is your carpal tunnel? Uh, and, and how do you keep it wide? How do you keep the carpal tunnel thriving strong with proper blood flow and lymph fluid flow through the carpal tunnel and away from the carpal tunnel? And right. if we take that with, with, with carpal tunnel particularly, I won't put the ball on. I don't want to delay things. But if you can imagine the ball on my hand, close against the ball, open and spread against the cord. Close yeah. against the ball open and spread against the cord. Stacy, do you think you could remember that? Like it's not difficult, right? But now when we understand our beautiful body and we understand this amazing carpal tunnel, we can understand that if we only are using the muscles that make it close, there's five muscles that attach directly onto the top of the carpal tunnel, the, the transverse yeah. ligament, okay? If we're only doing this all day, what do we expect to happen to that carpal tunnel? It's going to collapse. It, mm -hmm. It's just... I mean, that's, that's nature. And then, you know, yeah. if, especially in women, carpal, the carpal tunnel is built a little narrower. Okay. Carpal tunnel 
Yeah, carpal tunnel syndrome is di is diagnosed three to one on a ratio of three to one women to men. But oh. let's get away from that and talk about our core thing. Mm -hmm. uh, again, we're only talking about the carpal tunnel. But if I open and spread and use these muscles, the yeah. muscles that spread the hand, now all of a sudden, uh, that carpal tunnel stays nice and wide. Plus, I'm getting blood flow and lymph drainage and, and venous drainage back through the carpal tunnel. So now look at that paradigm again. Now with a simple exercise, I'm making that carpal tunnel thrive. If the carpal tunnel thrives, you're here in the paradigm. Over here might be like, oh, wow, you've got like an irreparable scarred fibrosed carpal tunnel. You might even need a surgery or more invasive stuff. Even I would say that, right? Right. So, but if we can keep it thriving over here, what's the chance of you getting over here? Like, let's right. just think about keeping our body thriving and no different than, you know, no different than any other part of your body and your elbow. We've talked about the carpal tunnel because the elbow, when we do the figure eight exercise, we take all those elbow. And, and again, the elbow is almost always a grip structure. That might sound crazy, but when are you, if I'm a guitar player, actually music opened us up to, a lot to this concept because you see a lot of cute, cubital tunnel syndrome in music you see a lot of uh, regular golfers and tennis elbow but you also see uh, radial tunnel syndrome in music a lot and there's a lot of supination i can't show it properly but a guitar player has to supinate to mm. use their fretting hand and if you're right. supinating all the time and you're practicing and you're playing gigs and you're doing this and you're you know you get into these elbow problems so the elbow to a guitar player is a grip mechanism but we don't think that way Right. So I know it's a long answer. You <laughs> see, I'm, I have a tendency to do it. But where are we on that paradigm? Are we keeping our elbow and our carpal tunnel and our fingers and our thumb and our wrist? Are we keeping them thriving? Or are we just bringing them? We're not advised. I don't, I don't usually ever blame the person because it's the health and fitness people that we have to take lead on this. We have to show them how to train properly. And then it's up to them. Do you want to stay thriving? You want to stay super healthy and understand your body? Or do you want to be like letting it go and letting it go and letting it go into imbalance of your activity, which for golf, music, workplace, there's a certain pattern of imbalance that's eventually going to cause a symptom, right? And then it's eventually going to need some invasive treatment if you don't, you know, if you don't be more aware in this area. Right. You keep your body thriving. You start to understand it and get thrilled with this creation of you and it's yeah. fun to exercise like but if we just like oh we're just this mechanical hunk of crap walking around doing our best right you're never going to be motivated to thrive and i think if you're working with health and fitness professionals that don't want to keep you here and they just want to see you when you're over here i, I would i would strongly suggest you look at your health and fitness team for whatever right. you're Oh, a hundred percent. And the one thing that I, I see a lot and, and it upsets me is that a lot of times doctors will push surgery onto patients when they don't really need surgery. And a lot of times I, I feel like things like the product that you just introduced to us, the Handmaster, can help issues without people having to go for surgery. Because when you go for surgery, a lot of times people will get the pain back after so many years. And, you know, and sometimes I've heard terrible cases when people have had surgery and it didn't go right. And also when you open your body up to oxygen, the composition inside your body changes as well. So then you could have other problems and other issues. What is, what is your intake about tr not trying to avoid surgery and, and the positives, and the negatives of surgery and why people should maybe focus on a device like yours, a product like yours, rather than to rush into surgery just because maybe a doctor had suggested it to them? Yeah, boy, there's a, <clears throat> there's a lot of good questions in that question. The first, the first thing I always say, and I've I think I've been through a lot of this for too long to say that I, I, everybody involved in healthcare, almost all of them to a T are, are looking to help their patients. So I don't say, well, these doctors are really pushing surgeries and they're this and that. And I, and I don't like what I see is they're trying to help their patient. I, mm -hmm. I think that there's, there's certain like pigeonholed educations where you say, here's what I'm going to do. Hey, here's right. the problem. And here's what I'm going to do. Cause that's the way they're educated. And it's, it's not a fault of their own in many cases, again, in many cases, boy, you think about, uh, 
some of the options to surgery if you get in a car accident or something like that or you you know fall off a fall out of a tree i i've had we've had three uh wrist or arm fractures in our in our kids and goodness sake if we didn't have the the invasive the technology to handle those invasive things we would be in trouble so everybody to me is uh, doing what they do best we just have to talk you know do these types of things discuss what the options are we can keep people out of out of just like trying to keep people out of jail you can get them to be a good person over here and not do crazy stuff over here and that's the way to me to best solve things so right i know that's a, a little bit of a long answer to that but that's the first thing i don't look at people as they're trying to take somebody and put them into surgery uh i don't believe that because we've done a lot of we've worked with now a lot of hand surgeons a lot of surgeons and and certain things are so necessary. It's a, it's a dream to have that as an option. Now, what I will say is that in our media, we do not in general push people towards the thrive side. And there's not a lot of advertising saying, you know, use, use Handmaster Plus and keep your carpal tunnel and your elbow and your wrists and your fingers yeah. and your thumbs thriving. Now, in my company, that would be a company decision. But if you try to get onto the Super Bowl, <laughs> there's a bit of an issue with the advertising dollar budget that I have. Yeah. So again, what we have to do is educate people. And I think the thing is to turn people on to the to to learning about their body. Yeah. You know, biology is can seem boring to people, but even if you just look at podcasts like yourself, these mm -hmm. things, who would ever think to look at their hand muscles? We we, we try right. to tell people. And once I get to talk to a group, they're they're extremely interested in their hand and grip muscles all of a sudden. It's not boring to them because we've lit a little lit a little fire about their body, not about, hey, my product is this. No, your story is this. You have these hands that you use every day, they connect you to what you're doing, and they are super, super important. So yeah. learn the structure a little bit. That's my job to tell you. You know, every time you grip something. The muscles that open your hand are also contracting. So right. you've got you've got the nine muscles that close your hand contracting, the nine muscles that open your hand co-contracting to support these muscles, and you've got these nine muscles in your forearm positioning your wrist for whatever you do. If you play guitar, if you're a, de a dental hygienist, they're they're a different set of patterns. So yes. learn, you know, get turned on by what your body has to go through to do this activity that you love doing. Right. And, and that's what we're trying to do a lot is I believe that's the way to get people to change their habits is to realize, my, I got this, this structure at the end of my body. And if I get to do that, if I understand and I exercise it properly, I'm going to perform better. I'm going to have less chance of injury. I'm going to be healthier. Um, it's, a, it's a very important area and people should be thrilled to learn it. And then once they learn it, yes, we have the easy solution for you to keep it functioning beyond what you can even imagine. Wow, that's amazing. Now, where can we find the Handmaster? Uh, so, so we're available. People can go to our website. Um, our main website for Handmaster is just handmasterplus.com. Um, our company website is doczac.com. It's D-O-C-Z, excuse me, Z-A-C.com. In America and Canada, it's Z-A-C. So D-O-C-Z-A-C.com. Um, we also, if you're, if, if you're in America, most of our, uh, a lot of our talks are in America. We are in, you can go ask by name in Kroger's, uh, some of the bigger stores, Kroger's and Smith's and, and those stores have it. Um, uh, but just ask for it by name in your pharmacies, but it's easy to get a hold of. You can go to our site and, uh, you can find us online pretty easy. Um, we're pretty much everywhere that people might look, but Kroger's is the store that, uh, carries us and supports us probably the most right now of the bigger names. Uh, any questions that somebody might have after this? I have zero problem answering the questions personally, and it's info at docsac.com and I'm happy to answer any questions. Are you available to have this? Do you have this product available on Amazon? Yes, it's on Amazon as well. Yeah, we, we, we do a lot of, uh, yeah, we do a lot of business on Amazon as well. Oh, that's excellent. Cause yeah. that'll be easy access for people to get the product. It's easy. Easy access, uh, and it's in a lot of places. And like I say, I think uh, when you understand the area and then you try the 
exercise. It's 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 great, and it can change. I'll, I'll say one more thing because I, I one more thing that we that we covered that was beyond what I ever expected to see in hand exercise. Period, Stacy. Is there's in the last about the well, last about six or seven years, there's been a lot of focus on five large studies that were done that equate hand strength are directly are directly proportional to life longevity. And so mm -hmm. because of this talk, I think your audience would understand why that might be. Well, now for years, we saw people say, you know, my grip strength's better. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm swinging the club better or tennis racket or, or my carpal tunnel feels better, but I'm also sleeping better or I'm this better and that better. And I never understood it. But then we came pro uh, across these studies and I started to realize, I think my guess at it, and again, this is just, we just guess based on our on our history, is that I think we are stimulating lymph drainage. Once I do these work to the extremities, now my body in, intuitively knows my environment is there's more hand muscles being used. I'm going to open up blood flow. I'm going to improve lymph drainage. And let's remember that lymph, our lymph ducts are basically at the you know base of our of our arms. And if we're going to increase blood flow to the extremities, I don't see how we don't increase lymph drainage and our lymph ducts are there and that's what drains the body. So I think we improve lymph duct performance. Um, again, it's, it's something where I think I make that comment so that people can understand your hands and your grip muscles are way more important than you ever thought they were and, and even more important than I thought they were. And I held them real high from my sports background. So Keep in mind, there's lots of things when we start to look at these cool hands and all these 27 muscles that move them and position them, you get those things healthy. And I think you're going to see, you know, other, other uh, health results as well. Oh, I definitely agree with you. Think about it. If you can't move your hands, like, and you're having pain in your hands, one, you're probably going to have trouble sleeping at night. And if you're putting pressure and if you don't sleep on your back and you don't sleep, like you'd have to probably sleep like a zombie, you know, when you sleep. And if you don't sleep like, you know, like that, and you're leaning against your hands and you have pain already in your hands, you're probably going to instigate and cause more pain. And I would think at nighttime when you have lack of circulation, because you're in, in a, in a certain position for a very long period of time, you're probably going to have more pain when you're sleeping, which will probably cause an interruption in, in the quality of sleep. And also, if you can't use your hands and you can't function like a normal human being where you're, you're active and doing the activities that we normally do and enjoy, I think you're going to, you, you know, for me personally, I, I would think you're going to develop um, frustration. You're going to develop anger. You're going to go, you know, you might even go into depression because you're not capable of doing the things that you normally could do before you experience these problems. Yeah, no, I, I think that's a really good point is just think about the, you know, as, <clears throat> you know, and as a population ages too, these, these, uh, these functional problems that I told you about, like that we have been talking about, if they're not addressed, okay, the, the your performance is going to continue to go down and go down and go down. You haven't looked at how these structures, how beautiful they are, how well they work, and you haven't supported that. So eventually this goes down. The arthritis doesn't get any better. There's no blood flow. There's no nutrients coming. How, how would it get any better? So you get into, you know, maybe take drugs. And that's where I don't ag agree with drugs, where we haven't made the effort to make these areas thrive. I don't agree with drugs at all because it takes people on a direction where they will never look at the area and get it to thrive. They'll just, you know, boom, feel better. Boom. Well, now there's side effects. Now there's this. And as a person feels themselves going into, you know, a poorer health paradigm, right? They're moved down. Now, all of a sudden you bring in one of the worst things for your health, which is that fear fear of the future. What am I going to be like? Can I play with my children, my grandchildren, my whatever, you know, am right. I going to not be able to play golf, play guitar, do, do my career, dental hygienist. Boy, we, we talk a lot about dental, dental hygienist when I talk, because I want them to really realize you are in one of the worst, you know, small tool palms down, you know, working for long times, but you bring the fear of your, of even, um, of, of, uh, income. So, yeah. Once we bring fear into it, now you start a whole new paradigm. Now the body reacts and, and goes into, you know, not a, not a, 
not a parasympathetic mode where you're always healing, always relaxed, always growth is good. You're into more, hey, there's a rattlesnake in the room. Now, what's going to happen for my future? And then your body actually starts to prepare itself quite differently, doesn't heal well, doesn't react well. Um, so so those types of things. And I yes, I get we're talking about hand muscles and let's not get out of control. But yes, if you're doing things and you're looking at yourself and you're self-devaluating yourself going like, well, now I'm no longer good at this. And what, what use am I for? And what's going to happen tomorrow? And I can't play with my children or grandchildren or et cetera. It right. does create a, a vision of your, of your life that you will to some extent fulfill, unless you start listening to things like this and just go, no, 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 stop. Smart yeah. enough. Let's look at this. Let's start to create blood flow. As long as your heart's beating, you can get blood flow and nutrients there and you can change your environment today and tomorrow. But you got to start and you got to start to do it somewhere. Just start now. And, it, you know, when you look at situations like this and you can apply them, Stacy, you can apply these to any other part of your body. Yeah. Look at it, study it, have somebody explain it to you if you don't want to go through all the, you know, so it's tricky for that. I love this stuff. I'm, I'm an anatomy nerd, junkie, whatever yeah. you want to call it. But go to somebody that can look and say, take a breath. Right. Heart's still beating. Let's get this right. Let's look at what we can do. Change your daily habits. Let, let's look at them. And, and you can really move forward well. But if you stay in fear mode and you say, I can't do anything. It's this the way I've got a disease. It's the, nothing will change. Well, then nothing probably will change. And, and right. uh, I, I find that sad because, you know, this, this beautiful body, we grew from two little cells, got to one cell and then built this. Yeah. We should start to understand that this is this life is something pretty pretty special. Let's let's yeah. change our way of looking at it. Figure out how we're going to thrive, make it thrive, and forget about you know sticking out in here in fear without ever looking at any possibility over here. You right. Know, you examine the possibility, and somehow you come up with the idea that no, I can't. My life can't be any better. Well, then you're probably going to end up here. But Many people don't look over here where you can thrive and be really, really well and enjoying things. Yeah, that's so true. And what I love about your product is it's for really for any age group because Absolutely. these problems can occur at, you know, even in at a young age. And especially as you get older, especially like 55 and older, you know, even as you get into 65 plus this is a great product also, because, you know, that's when you're yep. starting to feel those aches and pains, especially you hear people as we get older, we, we, we talk about how it sucks to get older because that's yep. when all those aches and pains that you, you don't feel like you did when you're 20, but this yep. really, this product is, is great for any age group, including, you know, from, from the older generation all the way to the younger generation, because I've known so many people, especially after college, they played sports as a kid. They played sports in middle school. They played sports going into high school. They played sports in college. And then all of a sudden they're having problems with their hands, their hips, their legs, their knees, because of all the over usage, you know, uh, it, it caught up with them. And yep. so this is actually something could be a preventative tool. I think also, if you, if you use it from an early on stage, you know, you might be able to, to prevent some of these intense pains that you would get later on. If you, do these exercises just like you, when you exercise and you tone your body up you know you if you if you do these extra hand exercises from an early on stage you might actually be able to prevent some serious problems with your hands later on you know if, so stacy for sure not might for sure you would and i'll tell you a story about that because i, I like I, I love that scenario because two sub uh, kind of two um categories really interest me a lot about, about watching what you just said so guitar players i, I yeah. love I, I, i'm i tried to i've tried to learn guitar forever but i don't have time now but it'd be it's such a great thing yeah but we work with a lot of guitar players so we've worked with hall of fame bands and i've worked with bands that i never dreamed of meeting and it's it's so cool but we also work with young bands um so we've worked with young bands it's so interesting to see whether we talk with the young kids and they're going and most of them are like, ah, I don't, what are you talking about? Hand exercise. I don't need that stuff. Right. But when we talk to them a little bit more, they, they get what we're talking about. Why don't you want to thrive and do everything you can to move faster and have less, like have more stamina and better blood flow and be quicker and have a wider spread and use those muscles properly. If we get them into that, they, you see them sometimes go, oh, I see what he's mean. I could be actually 
better and cooler and performing better and making better music. So the younger ones, you have a hard time getting through, but once you get them to think about their performance, they, yeah. they sometimes get it. But then you go way down to some of these older bands that we work with. And I've worked with bands that I just, I've been fans of. And it yeah, just yeah. blows me away when you see, because they've never heard this stuff about their hand. And they have such debilitating, many of them have such debilitating problems. And when we say, well, you could do this and start to change that, they're like, tell me more, tell me more. What are you talking about? Because they're, you know, they're desperate. Yeah, yeah. I, the other example I would say is pickleball. Pickleball's now become this huge so thing. Yeah. So the mm -hmm. older people that are playing pickleball are, are going kind of like, okay, I got this problem with my elbow or my fingers or my wrist. What, what can I do? What can I do? But the younger kids are now starting to go like, okay, pickleball. I can I can move my wrist better. And this is pickleball. I never ever imagined younger kids like being interested in pickleball. But, yeah. but it's just like, the younger paradigm wants to know that you could get better and you could perform better. The older, you know, the, the older people are going like, holy cow, I hurt after I play pickleball or play <laughs> guitar now. So yeah. like you say, there's, but I always say, start at any point in your, in your life by yeah. looking at this area and how interesting it is. And then just apply resistance to all the normal mechanics of closing, opening, and moving the wrist through its full range of motion. At the end of the day, you want full range of motion and balance and full circulation. That's what you want. doesn't matter if you're a, a dental hygienist, a pickleball player, a guitar player, uh, an artist, a, a seamstress. You're going to have different types of problems. That's the bad news. And, and that's for the therapist to figure out, whoever your healthcare provider is. But the good news is your exercise is the same. Right? You're yeah. still trying to get those 27 muscles through their full range of motion. That part is simple. What you do at home is simple. How you train for this area is simple because we've made it simple. But right. imbalances are complicated because they're all different. A guitar player has a different, has a lot more supination in their wrist, in their, in their forearm. A, yeah. a tennis player has a lot different, you know, there's force with grip. That's tough on the medial elbow. Yeah. But to train is nothing more complicated than what we talked about today. You either close, open, and spread if you're training the hand and the, the fingers, thumb, and carpal tunnel, or if you're training the entire kinetic chain of grip, you're doing right. close, open, and spread, figure eight, right? And if you do those, you're coming towards balance at the end of the day. So if you, if you want balance and performance in those areas, you either quit your activity or you do something to offset and maintain your balance. And right. You know, we don't suggest professional golfers quit what they're doing and, you know, get a newspaper route. We don't. <laughs> but we do suggest that you recognize you are in very imbalanced, repetitive gripping, uh, you know, profession. You have to do something to offset it or you will get repetitive grip injuries. You will. It's it just happens. And, that, and you know, ask the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame guitar players, guys and girls, you ask them how they're doing if they haven't paid attention to this area and, and what we're talking about all their life i will guarantee you they're having they've had problems or are having problems with those areas oh i i believe you I, you know because just like any other you know occupation you're using those hands every single day yep. you're going to yep. feel it after a while you definitely Absolutely. will if you don't train it properly it's going to catch up on you, you you're not you oh, it's very definitely. very rare to hide from it it's very true is there any last messages or thoughts you'd like to tell the audience before we go? Uh, yeah, I think I think I, I love the questions you've asked because the main thing I always love to get for the audience to hear is that you know pay attention to uh, this wonderful design that is you. Don't ever let somebody tell you you're not good enough, you're not this enough, you're not you know whatever enough, because if you really really think about it. Um, there, like, there's just magic in this life. You've, you've, you've created, you have built yourself from two cells to one cell into this thing. I used to think, oh, my ears are a little too big. Well, they hear, what are you talking about? You know, right. when you realize what a, what a, what a miracle you are. And I don't, I don't use that term lightly. Um, yeah. Then you can sit there and go, and if you're bored in your life and you haven't studied these, if you're bored in your life, study the hands for like a couple of weeks. Right. And, and look at our material and look at why we do what we do. 
This is not about a hand exercise product. This is about honoring this beautiful design of these of these hands that do so many things. Yeah. And we and we've somehow, somehow our society over our health and fitness education over this time, and we're in, you know, 2023, and we've come to this point where we don't know anything about our hands. It it's embarrassing. Yeah. If we looked at it and if the health and fitness product people said, look at the design of yourself, you are this, this miracle. And again, I don't take that, that term lightly. Why don't you study it? Why don't you take care of it? And before you know it, you'll find yourself exercising every day. You'll find yourself walking your dog every day. By the way, right. my dog came into the room earlier. <laughs> That's why the door is open. But <laughs> so those types of things that are that keep you healthy, um, yeah. great relationships. Um, great relationship with yourself where you honor yourself and then you exercise yourself. That's, yeah. that's what we're doing here. So that's what I would like your, your audience to take away is take a second and don't let somebody tell you that you're this piece of garbage that has all these diseases and these symptoms. It's not true. Look at the area, talk to a health or fitness professional that mm -hmm. really gets it. They'll explain what your neck's about, your back's about, your ankles are about, your hands yeah. are about. And then do the things that are necessary to bring st strength and length and balance and blood flow to those areas and honor those areas and get with it. And, and you know, don't be sobbing over some title somebody's given you. Right. Learn, come above that and uh, and then do what it takes to, to get these things thriving. Oh, so true. So beautifully said. I, I couldn't even word that better. Very true. Now, before we go, can you tell everybody your websites again, just so it, it's embedded in their brain? Yeah, our main website is docsac.com and it's D-O-C-Z-A-C.com. Uh, and if they want to get a hold of me, it's info at docsac.com. Uh, I answer the questions. Anybody asks some kind of more technical health question, I love answering them. It's all similar answers to what I've told you today, but uh, these are the types of programs we like to uh, speak to these types of audiences and then they can take it they become educated and they can talk to their family and friends and spread it that uh, it's a pretty darn cool life and all we're doing is mimicking we're, we're just agreeing with the way nature built you and we're going to exercise it based on those on that premise and you'll do well oh yeah, this has been wonderful, Dr. Terry. I I thank you so much for being on the show. You know, your our listeners are going to benefit from you. You know, there's hundreds and hundreds of people I I've spoken to over the course of my life. That, you know, you talk about inflammation and they talk about hand pain and they talk about how it interferes with their life. So this is excellent, and I I commend you on creating this product and for all your years to help others it, is just remarkable. So thank you for being you know such a pillar in our community. Thank you so much. Well, thanks again for having me, because if, like I say, if we don't have an audience, it doesn't matter how good what we're talking about or what the product is. Yes. We need the audience. And, and uh, these podcasts are vital and they're they're changing things. We can feel it. So thanks for having me. Oh, you're very welcome. You have a wonderful day. All right. You too. Stacy. thanks a lot.